courage versus persistence. Two life's principles that we use, although maybe we don't use them on a conscious level, but somehow they run our life. So in this podcast, I want to look at persistence first. What is persistence? What is holding on to things and why sometimes we go until the end, although it doesn't really make us happy? So is persistence always a good thing or maybe not? That's the first thing I want to cover. Second, we're going to talk about courage. Uh, I love that word, courage. It's so beautiful. But we're going to look at the value of courage and I am going to give you a, a very important clue so you know when to use courage or when to persist. Because these are two different principles with two different meanings and of course we need to use them in the right way. I see a lot of people who persist. And yes, I see people who are courageous, but I also see people who persist on the wrong path of life. And I see people who are courageous on the right path of life. So let's take a deeper look. Okay. We're going to talk about persistence first. I don't know about you, but um, I was raised with a lot of persistence. And I see people who persist and who are, you know, easy on it. Like, it's a second nature. They really don't have to put a lot of effort in to persist. The subconscious mind was formed, educated, programmed to persist. And if I look back at my childhood, that was exactly what I did. You know, when I was five years old, I wanted to join the youth choir. Ah, it was a beautiful time. I still have memories of those days, actually, because it was so exciting. In church, there was a new choir that was formed. The pastor, you know, announced that. Uh, in the community and since my mom and dad went to church they thought it was a really cool idea to subscribe me to youth choir and since my friends from school were going i thought yeah i'll give it a try and my mom said no 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 you're not gonna give it a try you're gonna do it because once you start you will persist you will keep on doing it she says this is not an event and Inge, she says, there will be times that this is going to be tough. You know, you are going to be grumpy or tired or even, you know, having a headache. And I'm going to tell you, if you say yes today, you are going to persist. There's no way of, you know, um, letting go. There's no way of giving up. You will have to persist. And I say, sure. What did I know? I was five years old. A year later, I wanted to do exactly the same with the Scouts. Oh, my father was such a Scouts fan, so he was pride, proud that I wanted to join the Scouts. And my mom said, listen, the same rules apply. I understand that you want to go to Scouts on Sunday's afternoon, you know, but once you start, you are going to persist. You will continue to grow, no matter what the weather, she said. I said, okay. And of course, there were times that I didn't want to go. There were Friday nights that I was tired after school and I didn't want to spend time in a cold church rehearsing the same songs all over again. It was boring. And of course, there were Sunday afternoons where the weather was so awful. It was windy and raining and cold. But my, my mom reminded me, you said yes, you have to keep on going. And she dragged me sometimes in tears, you know. I was crying in the car. I still have these memories. And she would drive me and say, out you go. You have to persist. 
You have to hold on. You cannot back off. You choose, right? You choose every day again because you chose back in the days with your heart. And that's a very important thing. My mother knew that in pushing me in that moment, I would build some character. But she also knew that I made the right choice, you know, to start. I, I wanted to go. I loved meeting my friends in the choir, at Scouts. Even, you know, I went to the Arts Academy and, and I did that for 18 years in a row. 18 years of youth choir, 18 years of Scouts and 18 years of Art Academy. My life was full. My friends were there. And you know, yes, I learned to persist in tough moments, but she knew that the choices I made were the right choices. Choices. She knew that in 90% of the time, going would bring me joy. I loved being in Scouts. I loved being in the choir. We had such, such a good time. We had so much fun. I loved the drawing academy, the arts academy. So she knew that I had to persist when my ego would kick in and say, ah, oh, you know, it's cold. I don't feel like going. Today, I'm proud to say that I'm a very persistent person. I'm very consistent even. But that's another topic for another time. <laughs> so I owe my mother a great deal. I'm so happy that I know what persistence is and I learned it from a young age. Now, I also learned to persist when I didn't have to persist. I will give you a different example. When I got married the first time in 1990, I knew very early in that relationship, in that marriage, that things were not right. There was not a lot of love in that relationship. There was not a lot of respect. There was no warmth. And as years went by, I really understood that I was not in the right place. Things got harmful, stressed, even abusive. And I persisted for years too long. I know that now. I was married for 11 years and the four last years were four years too long. And that is also what persistence taught me. I was holding on because I was programmed to hold on by my mother to the things that didn't suit me. I was holding on to um, an environment that was not growing, that was not loving, that was not caring. But hey, I didn't know any better. I was persistent. So after four years of doubting, of sleepless nights, of tons of tears, I knew I had to pull the plug out of that marriage. I knew somehow in my darkest night of the soul that I had to save myself. Oh, I was so scared because I didn't know what was going to happen to me once I would pull that plug. But I knew in that dark night that I had to do it. And that is when courage came to the existence. I will come back to that in, in just a moment. Hang on, we are getting there. So in that dark night of my soul, I knew I had to save myself and my children. I didn't know how. I was scared that, you know, people would judge me. I was ashamed. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. 
I only knew that I couldn't persist anymore, that it was not right to persist anymore. So one day I told my father that I would jump out of the relationship and I asked him if I could come back home and live with him <clears throat> together with my two children. They were four and nine years old at the time. And he said, yes, of course, you're my daughter. I love you. Although I felt that I had failed big time. And I will tell you why. My parents divorced when I was 14 years old. They were married for 16 years. And I always had the belief that I would do better. <laughs> and I pulled the plug after 11 years. I even didn't make it till the 16 years. So yes, I felt that I failed big time. Little did I know that when I pulled that plug, it would take two, three more years of a lot of pain and a lot of sorrows, losing everything, not just my marriage, but I lost everything I had. My business, my money, the properties, but also my self-respect and my self-confidence. I was so ashamed. But yet in that, in that same moment, I was proud. I knew I had to do the right thing. I knew I did the right thing. I had to save myself. I knew I had to save myself, otherwise I would get very sick. That was the hunch I had. I knew I had to save myself because otherwise maybe I wouldn't be here anymore. So that is what courage does. On the lonely dark nights of the soul, when the ego has no story left, that is where you find the true voice of your heart and your soul, your true self that says, how much longer? How much longer? We know that you can persist in and you don't have to hang on to the things that don't belong to you, that don't make you happy. And here is the most fundamental insight of this podcast today. If you realize by listening to me now that you are walking on a journey of life where you are not growing, you need to get out of there. I was not growing in that relationship. It was a mentally abusive relationship. I was so unhappy. I cried myself to sleep every night. This relationship was a downward spiral. It was not growing. If you are in a job or a position or even if a bus in a business that is not growing and that is not the right environment for you, you need to get out of there. Why? Because plants cannot grow in toxic soil. My marriage was toxic soil. And I also knew deep in my heart of hearts that my children couldn't grow in such a toxic environment. It was not an environment conducive to growth. It was a downward spiral. It was static energy. It was not going anywhere. And I realized that. So maybe for you, it is not the relationship. Maybe for you, it's the job. It's the business, it's the house you live in. Or maybe for you, it is your health habits, like smoking every day or drinking a bottle of wine every day. Maybe that is where you are stuck, but the energy is stuck and you are not growing. Maybe for you, it's your financial positions. You know, you are not growing financially and you are leaking energy because you have stacks of bills on your desk and you don't know how to solve that. Maybe that is your journey. In any, any case, I knew that I had to get out of there. 
And I dig deep, I dig so deep uh, in my heart. And I said, Inge, save yourself, save your children, get out of this miserable place, get out of the toxic environment. And so I did. And yes, I lost everything. I lost money. I lost my position. I lost my business. I lost my self-respect. I lost my self-image. I lost my identity being, you know, being a wife, but also a business owner. But in that moment, I found who I truly was. That is when I hit rock bottom. There's something good in that word. Only when we arrive at the bottom of the pit, that is the place where we can push and come back up. That is where you save yourself, although you are scared. I know you are going to, scare, to be scared because your alter ego is now alive and kicking and will try to do everything to keep you where you are. My ego was holding on to that marriage for four years too long. Four years in a toxic environment is enough to get very, very sick. Where do you think burnouts come from? Where do you think depressions come from? Listen, it's not the weak that get burnouts. It's not the weak that get depressed. It's the strong ones who hold on and persist on the wrong journey of life. Whatever that means to you. And it takes courage and honesty to say, hey, you know what? This is not for me. It takes courage to say, and I still remember those words, this cannot be the purpose of life. It cannot be the purpose that I'm gonna stay in this environment. It cannot be the purpose that I'm not growing. And if you're not growing, and that is the key element that I wanna share with you, if you are in an environment where you cannot grow, you will have to save your soul and change environment, whatever that area of your life is. Career, job, business, relationship, friends, money habits, other health habit, habits, anything, anything. It takes courage to admit that you need to change. Because for most people, change is very scary because they don't know what comes after the change. And honestly, I didn't know what would come after the decision. I didn't know that I was going to lose everything after I made the decision to end my relationship, to end my marriage. But today, with my hands on my heart, I can tell you that it was the best thing that happened to me. It was the best decision I ever made. Finally, I stood up for myself. Finally, I choose me over my programming. And yes, I was very persistent in keeping up appearances. I was very persistent in, you know, telling myself that I had to hold on in telling myself that I had to do better than my parents. I was holding on to the wrong things. I was persistent in the wrong environment. Now, I was also persistent in the right environment, meaning youth choir, the scouts, the arts academy. That were places where I could grow. I owe my childhood to those environments. I could see the world with a choir. I had the most wonderful experiences with the Scouts. And 
the arts academy showed me how creative I am. I still am. I, can, I still can draw. But that creativity, I still use it every day in my life. I use it to create a beautiful interior design, for instance. So I knew what it was to be persistent in the right environment too. And that is an exercise that you will have to make. Am I in the right environment? Am I walking the journey of life conducive to growth? Am I walking on a journey where I can become more of me? Am I walking on a journey where I can be fulfilled? Where I can experience significance? If the answer is yes, go on, persist. Yes, you will fail. Yes, you will fall. But you will get back up and you will persist. But if you are not in an environment conducive for growth, if you are in an environment where you are not growing, where you are holding on to things that cause you deep sorrows because you learn to persist, I'm going to tell you, you have to get out of there. You have to dig deep in your heart and soul and find the courage to move yourself. Because I promise you, once you make the decision, although it's hard, and although your ego tells you that you should be ashamed and that you are guilty for leaving that environment and leaving the people and although your ego is now you know blaming you for the decision your soul is going to thank you for that decision because after the decision that is where you are going to find freedom that is where you're going to find purpose and meaning. That is where you are going to find the journey where you can grow. And that's the most fundamental insight today. We are spiritual beings, gifted with a mind, living in a body, and we need an environment for growth and development. And if you are not in the right environment, you need to use courage. I love how Brené Brown says, courage comes from the French word cœur. And cœur means heart. And she says, people who have the courage to admit that they were wrong, meaning, walking on the wrong journey of life, persisting to the wrong things, holding on to the wrong things, the wrong environment, the wrong people, the wrong job, the wrong habits, she says, are vulnerable people. They admit their vulnerability because they know that in that vulnerability, they find the voice of their heart. She says that Courageous people are whole-hearted people. <gasps> Isn't that beautiful? It means that these people learn to live by the voice of their heart, with all of their heart. And she also says that these people are passionate people. They choose passion over comfort. They live for something, and we all know that we don't live for ourselves, just for ourselves. For ourselves alone, we don't live for ourselves alone. We live for ourselves and other people. And she says, that is where you find true passion. When you dig deep into your soul and you admit that you were wrong. That you admit that you were persisting on the wrong journey of life. That you admit that you need help. She says, it takes courage to admit that you need help, that you don't have to do it alone. You need courage to say, please help me transition in life. Help me to find my true voice. That is where courage comes from. It's the language of the soul. It's the language 
of the true self versus the language of the alter ego who tries to persist although you're not in the right place. And when I see people who burn out, I see strong people because they can persist and they can hang on to and they can push through, but it doesn't make them any happier. They choose comfort over growth. They choose what is familiar over the scary unknown journey led by the heart. But I'm going to tell you, that is where your purpose is. You don't think you're hearing these words just by coincidence, are you? I don't believe such thing. I believe that you needed to hear this today. Not because it's me, but be because you, you came to the podcast and you did, made the decision to hear these words. So I hope that I can speak to your soul and to your heart. And of course, if you want in our academy, we can help you, you know, make the right decisions from the heart, from the soul. That is what we do. And I truly hope that I gave you the courage today, that I could speak to your heart and that you will find the courage to say, help me. Yes, I want to change the course of my life, the course of my relationship, maybe the course of your business, the course of your job, the course of your money relationship. I don't know what it is that is on your mind right now. I just know that I want to help you because I'm still grateful for the moment that I can rely on my heart and my soul to make the right decisions. I had to learn that too. I had to admit that I didn't know how to do that. But I'm eternally grateful for the journey. And yet today, when I look back to these events, I can admit, although it was brutal and painful, it was liberating and it was absolutely the right thing to do. Because I learned to, fall, to follow, better said, the calling of my heart. And I hope that you will too. I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode. Bye bye and be well.